Hey everybody, it's Al again. Okay, kind of picking up where we had left off. Um, now I have my my blocking surface. Uh, the next thing I want to move on to is going to be uh, creating a uh, creating a uh, inside and outside boundary to limit where the cutter uh, is going to cut in X and Y. So. I'm going to go to a top view here, and I'm going to use Extract Edges Single. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go around, and I'm going to pick uh, all the the fillets. These are the areas that I want to get um, the wireframe from. Now, I could select the whole model and get all the wireframe. Uh, but it kind of generates some extra boundaries that aren't really um, needed and uh, so it's really not too big of a deal to just go through here and to pick on the fillets now one of the things that we're gonna end up we're gonna flatten this boundary or we're gonna flatten this wireframe the other thing that we're gonna do as well is we're gonna um, we're going to offset it so that we have um, room for the cutter to follow um, follow the areas uh, that we want. Um, Alright, so this gives us all our wireframe boundary boundaries. And right now, you know, you can see that these are in, uh, in 3D. So before I just project them down, a lot of times I like to just kind of clean up and get rid of stuff that I don't need. So I'm just going to uh, select all these connecting lines here. And, uh, you know, I'll just select them and delete them. Kind of get rid of the stuff that I don't really want. Okay. And then, uh, just like I had done in the other video where I uh, projected uh, the wireframe down flat onto a, uh, a surface uh, using a different color and then deleting the, the color that I uh, didn't want, uh, that's basically the same, uh, same concept that I'm going to use. Alright, so we got all of this stuff deleted now. So, uh, I'm going to just draw a rectangle. I'm going to generate a surface plane. Alright, now I'm going to change the color that I'm drawing with. And then we'll do other project curves to surfaces. We'll select our curves, we'll select our surfaces. Alright, then we'll go to selection, pick orange, and delete. And that gives me all my profiles, and uh, I'm doing a chain selection. You can see um, some of these uh, some of these areas are um, some of the areas are uh, chaining. Some of them aren't. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do an offset. I'll change the color that I'm drawing in, and I'll do an offset, and. Uh, uh, do that one there. Uh, okay. Other offset. Okay. So that gives me an offset for the outside, so select this stuff and get rid of it okay so now on uh, this inside shape here I want to offset this too so we're gonna do an offset uh, let's try this again other offset here to there all right we got that going on say here to there we got that going on. All right, so we got that boundary now, and then um, you know we'll come in here and trim this up. So I'll say quick trim, get rid of this and this, 
and this and that. Okay, so we got this outside boundary. It's, it's not chained all the way through. We got this inside boundary. Kind of to clean it up, you know, uh, we can just delete a line and then rejoin. Sometimes, like when you project it, uh, you can get a bunch of smaller um, entities and they end up uh, being on top of each other. So uh, sometimes you just have to delete it and clean it up. All right, so we have our inside and outside. We got those two there. So now we want to do uh, offset to this shape here and offset to this shape there. And then we want to offset this one to there. Okay. So now we can get rid of all the purple stuff. And then uh, this boundary in here, again, we're going to just trim this up. So a quick trim here and there and there. And then uh, we want to chain it. We want to make sure that it all chains. So this chains this chains, this chains, and this chains. All right, so now we have our 2D boundary. So when we go, we have our blocking surface that we generated, and then we have our 2D boundary, and then we have our model. So when we go to our geometry, we want to make sure that um, uh, we select all our surfaces. And then when we go to our boundary, we want to make sure to select our boundary surfaces. And then now we can just recompute our toolpath here, and the end result will be, you know, uh, the toolpath isolated to, to just that radius. And uh, depending on how well we did with our boundary, uh, we should do a pretty decent job to come in here and clean this up. Now, the reason why we have the blocking surface is to if the tool boundary starts going down the wall we don't want it to go deeper into the part so we you know if the boundary allows the tool to go around the outside of the radius the blocking surface blocks it from going any deeper and um, you know there we go there's the result that we have you can uh, see in here you know if I if I bring my blocking surface back up um, I'd really want to push this uh, surface back a little bit on the front of this uh, to make sure we get past the tangency point of that radius, but um, that again we would have just adjusted that spline curve. But uh, you know, looking at this, this is the the result that we were looking for. You know, isolated tool path coming around. If we need it to dip further down uh, past the edge of the part, we can always offset our boundary. Um, but those those are the steps that that I that I follow for this example. I find them to be pretty useful. If you guys have any comments about the workflow or or uh, any questions about what I've done here, feel free to reply back to the thread or the Facebook or YouTube page. All right, guys. Thank you so much.